Hello, I am going to be starting out the video that I was talking about. Um, sorry, I'm a little upset. I want to clarify why I'm doing this. Um, no, this has nothing to do with, again, trying to silence um, Feldman. I am a survivor of child abuse myself. And after seeing that fight between the two Corys, I started noticing things. And I've been noticing things about Feldman for a little bit now. And I used to be a supporter of his. Because he's a survivor like myself, so naturally I wanted to support him in his journey. But then it seemed like this journey was more about Hain than it was about himself. And I found that a little questionable. Because he has a story of his own as that's just as important and, and just as valid and yeah, he, I, I, but anyway, he started going around calling people who didn't agree with him pedo protectors, which to me sounded really, really odd. Maybe, I don't know, when I was supporting him, I guess I justified it for whatever reasons. But let me get to the point. I watched that fight and Haim accused Corey of still being friends and being BFFs with his rapist, which is pretty serious to me. And then I later discovered through friends sharing stuff that not only was Feldman friends with Corey's rapist, he maintained friendship with this guy even after Haim's death. I am going to provide video right after this little entry. Uh, first of all, Judy Haim saying that Dominic Bradshaw is in fact a, her son's abuser. Then I'm going to be showing a clip of Corey Feldman saying a friend went to the Inquirer. A friend. And then I'm going to be providing proof that it was Dominic Bradshaw who indeed, in fact, went to the Inquirer about the Charlie Sheen story in Haim. And then after that, I have another little tidbit of video footage I'm going to be editing together that shows Feldman talking about the man who went to the Inquirer also being a abuser of Haim. So with everything that I'm going to edit together through the videos that I have found, to make it easier for everyone to digest, you will clearly see Haim was right. Corey maintained a friendship with his rapist. And even after that fight, even after Haim expressed how he felt, and you can obviously see it, I mean, I played it in the other uh, video prior to this one, you can take a look at it for yourself. But even after that argument, Feldman still didn't care and what we were going on almost 10 years and yes Bradshaw died about a year after the inquiry came out that story but you gotta figure all the way up until then and I have video proof of Feldman calling this man his friend and my question is Feldman I've been raped how can you do this how can you sit there and act like Haim's your friend like seriously dude the thought of the guy who raped me and, and molested me when I was a kid, he still tries to get in contact with me on Facebook. And for my best friend to be friends with that I just... And I'm supposed to believe that you have Haim's best interest at heart and I'm going to prove that you maintained a friendship with one... To... I'm really angry. So that's basically why I'm doing this because, you know, Haim's dead. And... That's not cool. And I support you, Corey, as a victim, but seriously, why would you maintain that friendship? And they can't deny it, it's on, it's on camera. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show my receipts and show my proof. And I hope people pay attention to this documentary because this is the same individual who maintained a friendship with Corey Haynes' rapist on a big screen trying to make the world believe that he has this man's best interest at heart. And I'm not going to say that everything in that documentary is a lie because I bet you there is some truth to it. But it's not the right perspective. There are only half-truths. The whole story is not going to be told. And I'm telling you what, Corey's going to make sure his butt's covered. And he's going to throw Haim under the bus. And you can tell that by watching the trailer. 
when you see the 911 call being used. The man who's constantly doing jabs at Haynes' mom is going to use the 911. But you guys just pay attention. Anyway, before I keep talking, I'm really upset. Here we go. All right. Hey, this is it. On the show, on national TV, he's going to come out and he's actually going to tell Corey Feldman and surprise him with the fact that his friend, Dominic Brasha, was the one that he introduced my son to as soon as they met at 15 and a half, as soon as we moved. And he actually exposed his own abuser, which was Corey Feldman's friend, Dominic Brasha. He exposed his own abuser without asking a penny. I'll go you one better. You let me get around in my life, man, raped, so to speak, when I was about 14 and a half, and I'm saying this right now, by the guy you so f***ing hang out with, and tell me I'm 14 and a half, take responsibility. You know exactly what I'm talking about. What'd you do, man, when you saw that going down when I was 14 to me? What'd you do? You knew about it, besides being his best friend. What'd you do? up they protect it in fact i know of a friend of mine that actually went and spoke to a reporter and gave all the information and they were the day before i launched my campaign they were supposed to put out a story in the inquirer and they came to me for a comment people who perpetuated the crimes against well, I've already, you i've already uh named all the people that have perpetuated crimes against me the only thing that I haven't done is is name the people that perpetuated crimes against my best friend yes, right. because that's where the red tape comes in. Yes. I wasn't there. I was there actually for two people. Yeah. Uh, one of them is now dead and he died since the, uh, since the article in the Inquirer came out. The guy who told the story to the Inquirer, a lot of people don't know this, a year later he was found dead in his apartment. Does it worry you? making these allegations and, and they have broader impact. But... 